We're going to finish the performance exercises first. And if we have time first hour, we'll go on to chapter seven. We'll have the test at the beginning of second hour. So we're going to go to page 161. And again, we're practicing mainly what? Implosives, laryngealized or creaky voice, uh, voiceless, not just, not just um, um, vowels, but also nasals and other sounds like L. So let's go back to C. We didn't quite finish C on page 161. Let's just do them together. And we've got creaky first here. Then what do we call just ordinary voicing? Modal, Modal voicing. Then? Breathy and voiceless. OK, let's start with number one. And we're going to start it off with a glottal stop. It's just sort of like having a block to push you off when you're running a race. That's what the glottal stop sort of is like here. All right, for number one. Uh, um, uh. Okay, I put an uh there. Let's, let's do it with M. I didn't do it very well. Let's go again. Uh, go again. Uh, um, mm, mm. Okay, with N. Mm, not uh, you have to go mm. Alveolar, once more. And with the velar nasal. And with lateral. And with E. All right. Try to superimpose breathy voice or murmur onto intervocalic consonants, saying, try, ama, uh, and ana, uh, and ana, uh, apla, uh, okay? And don't worry if it's also evident in the adjacent vowels. Now try, to, try adding breathy voice to stops. The release of the closure should be followed by a brief period, by a period of murmur extending into the vowel. So we have a. Uh, La, a, da, and a, ga. Add creaky voice or laryngealization to intervocalic consonants. Try. A, ma, a, na, a, la. Then <clears throat> produce stops with creaky voice or laryngealization. A, ba, a, na, a, la. And then stops with creaky voice. A uh, ba, a uh, da, a uh, ga. And don't worry if the creakiness goes on into the next vowel. Then say a uh, ba, making sure you have a fully voiced intervocalic stop. And then keep increasing the length of the voicing. So, a uh, ba. Say it about three times, and each time let the voicing get a little longer. Yesterday in Kaohsiung, I had a pronunciation <coughs> workshop. And they were really having trouble with voicing, with final voice stops. And the way I think to help is, for example, the difference between tab and tap. Many of my students think that tap, zigadongshi, is tab, T-A-B. Why is that? Because they don't distinguish between tap and tab. Right. So in order to get that final voicing, of course, the length in vowel is important. My students yesterday in Kaohsiung didn't know about that. I don't know if anybody in the class knew that before a voice sound, the vowel gets lengthened. So that was new for them. But in addition, you still need a bit of voicing at the end. Usually it stops about halfway through, but we still need that voicing, at least if we're pronouncing it normally. So tap, tab. And if they're having with it, trouble with it, first of all, I point out that you have it in Taiwanese as well. Jiliap, jiliaba. Nigga ba is voiced. And second, actually a similar strategy, you can add a little schwa at the end. And extend the voicing, pretend like it's the beginning of another word, and then you can usually get the voicing. So tab, 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 tab. So when you're saying b, 
Usually, an initial voice stop is easier than a final. Is that right? 放在词首比较容易念 So just make it into an initial by adding a schwa. So tab, and then cut off the uh tab, and then you've got it. All right. Here we're going to just say ab aba. It's something similar. We'll say it kind of normally first, then lengthen it and make it as long as you can on the third reading. Okay? Aba, aba, aba. All right. One more time. Aba, aba, aba. All right. Now do it with. A da, a da, a da, and ga, a ga, a ga, a ga. Okay, and now we're going to produce them initially, and make sure that you're not saying nasals. And a lot of Taiwanese, when they're trying to learn this, they end up pronouncing a nasal, especially at the end of a syllable. Okay, so long, fully voiced stops again without the a. Go. Ba, da, ga, and you got that rumble in your throat. That's the voicing, and so you're not. Make sure you're not saying ba, da, ga. We do have sounds like that in the world, especially in African languages. We call it prenasalization. Prenasalization. We're going to learn it in the next chapter, but that's not what we're doing now. And then produce voiceless, unaspirated stops before vowels. So everybody, let's go. Okay, ba, da, ga. That's no problem, and then we can add more aspiration than usual for L. Go, pa, ta, ka, and then make practice saying sequences of voiced, voiceless, unaspirated, and aspirated plosives. This is not difficult. We did this last time, but it's good to go over it again. So voiced, voiceless, voiceless, aspirated. Go, ba, ba, pa, da, da, ta. Ga, ga, ka. All right, and then as many intermediate stages as you can. We'll just use five levels, and we've sort of done that already. So let's just do that with ba, long, fully voiced, a little bit shorter, voiceless, unaspirated, slightly aspirated, strongly aspirated. So with ba, 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 pa, pa. All right, one more time. Let's do da this time. Da, 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 ta, pa. All right, one left. Let's do ka. Ga, 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 ka, ka. All right. Um, so o we already know. And um, extend this series. By beginning with a laryngealized stop and ending with a murmured stop, and we've sort of done that already. But let's let's go through all the way this time through a murmured stop.、Um, column one, go. Ba, 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 pa, ba. Okay, two. Da, 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 ta, da. Ga, ga. Ka. Let's do it again. I did it wrong. Let's start with laryngealized. Go. Ga, 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 ka, ga. All right. And this is the part that we didn't finish last time. So let's go through column one. Don't go too fast and concentrate, so you get all of the little changes. And remember that typo in column three. Have you found it? Column three. There's a typo. What should it be? Just looking at it, it looks strange. Column three. What do you see? That's strange. That's right. So in column three, word number four, that H should be a small raised H and not a regular H. That's a new typo. Didn't have that before. All right, column one. Let's go. Demas, 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 demas. Two. Begal, 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 begal. Okay. Three. Golden, 
五点，五点，五点，五点。Okay, and then adjectives. It says when you're making an adjective, you should be able to feel that you make an articulatory closure. For example, bring your lips together. It may not be your lips. It may be tongue tip, alveolar ridge, maybe back of the tongue and the velum. Then you make a glottal stop. That means you have to bing xi. Feel like you're holding your breath. Raise your larynx. You can feel that. So, and you should be able to. Um, uh, sorry, under four. Release the articulatory closure, and then release the glottal closure. Then that will push the air out, so it sort of explodes. And if you can't produce the sequences, reread the section to find some useful hints. Let's just produce those three adjectives and ask. Go. Ah, ah. Uh, and Tina can do it now. <laughs> and Tina can do it now. It's always fun when somebody runs into me on campus and they go, "Miss Chong, Miss Chong, I can do it." Listen, ah, I can do it. <laughs> it happens with many kinds of sounds. After practice, usually when you're biking around campus, you get it, and it's always exciting for everybody. And next is implosives. Let's try them. That's the harder one. So. Mm. Remember, you're swallowing. Keep your mouth closed and then swallow. Mm. Mm. Not mmm. If you say mmm, then it's coming in your nose. Your nose has to be blocked up too. So, mmm. Mm. All right. Not mmm. If I hear mmm, it's wrong. You have to plug your nose. Mmm. 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 Mm. It's not mmm. It should not have an M sound. Mmm. That doesn't sound like M to you, does it? There, no nose air going in. So some of you are going mmm. That means your nose is open. So mmm, mmm, mmm. All right, and then you impose that, superimpose that on the stops. Catch your breath. Yeah, ba, ba, ba. ba. Not mmm ba. If there's no nasal there, ba, 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 ba. ga, ga. Okay. Let's work on clicks. Uh, let's try a voiceless version of each click between vowels. So here um, we're just doing the k sound. So, and we have, let's just review the places of articulation. We have a straight line is dental, exclamation point is, post alveolar, double vertical line, lateral, okay, so, at ah, at ah, all right. Post alveolar, ah, 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 and lateral, ah, 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 ah. Now voiced version is going to be g, so dental, ah, 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 ah. Post alveolar, ah, 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 ah. Lateral, ah, 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 ah. And then the nasalized, which I think is the easiest, ah, 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 ah. Post alveolar, ah, ah. Uh, ah, and lateral. Uh, ah, uh, ah. All right, let's do some nonsense words going down, starting from the left. Is it that difficult? <laughs> okay. All right, the first one. De dog. Not so hard. Next one. Be dog. Uh huh. Be dog. Uh huh. A bop. And. Bop. Uh huh. And I think that's unreleased. Let's do the second column. Tip u. Uh huh. Ba god. Uh huh. Do gap. You have to p at the end. There's a there's a there's an adjective at the end. Try that one again. Do gap. And excuse me. And a do g. Uh huh. Next. O, O, uh huh. B, A, and K, O, and E, 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 E. Okay. All right, we're done with that. Um, anybody want to ask any questions? Make sure that your exercises are ready. We'll collect them during break. We have the we went over the written exercises last class. Collect those during break. 
Um, so no questions on chapter six. We're going to go on to chapter seven. Uh, test will be second hour, like I said. So let's start on chapter seven, consonantal gestures. And whose turn? New chapter. Whose turn? Who was the last to read? OK, no, you're just fixing your hair. Do we know where we are? It's Wendy? OK. Page 163. Chapter 7, consonantal gestures. The movements of the lips and tongue in English are only a sm small subset of those that can be used for making consonants. Scores of other sounds can be made, as we as we will see by cons considering different languages. Mm -hmm. Considering, it's not con. Considering. Considering. Right. Considering different languages, an appropriate way to describe consonantal gestures in the languages of the world is in terms of two of their aspects. Say it again. Is in. Is in, mm -hmm. is in terms of two of... Say the word terms. I don't hear your M really clearly. Terms. Right, now it's good. In terms of two of their aspects. 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 Mm -hmm. The targets of the dress... The targets? The this is our main point, so we need to stress it. He just said two, and as soon as you see a number, don't you start counting? Which two is he talking about? The first one is targets. So, um, Wendy, you're reading really nice. Actually, vowels and consonants are great, but it's kind of flat. And I know you, you've got a cold, so that makes it harder. But try to put a little more um, intonation into it, up and down, and ups and downs, and also a little more ganching. <laughs> you can have ganching in phonetics, actually. <laughs> the targets of the gestural movements, commonly called as, called the place of articulation. The what? The plays of our The what? The plays. Places. Is that a Z? Places. Yeah. C, as far as I know, is never pronounced Z. So that's easy to remember. S and Z, you're sure If you see an S, you often don't know if it's S or Z. But C is never pronounced Z, as far as I know, except I can think of one exception. In some people's speech in British English, they say electricity. Some people say electricity in Britain. I haven't heard it in the States. <clears throat> But in general, when you see a C, just rule out Z. Ingai boy is Z, hansha. Commonly called the places of articulation and the way in which the target is approached. Often thought, as, often thought of as the manner of articulation. OK, that was pretty good. That was better. As soon as we've given somebody a number, we have to emphasize those two. Here it's two, so we have to emphasize the two so the listener knows what are those two you just mentioned. First, the targets of the gestural movements, commonly called the places of articulation, and the way in which the target is approached, often thought of as the manner of articulation. Got it? That whole pattern? We, we've given, so we have to put that strong emphasis on those two things that we said are coming. Can you try it that way? The targets of the gesture movements, commonly called the places of articulation, and the way in which the target is approached, often thought of as the manner of articulation. There's our, there's our big tonic. Okay. The targets of the gestural movements, common, movements, movements mm -hmm. commonly called commonly uh, commonly right? commonly called the place of our the, the places of our, our articulation articulation more is coming articulation mm -hmm. and the way in it when in which the target is approached often thought of as the thought of thought of thought of mm -hmm often thought of as the manner of articulation. Okay, you're not angry at it. It's not manner. It's, <laughs> it's manner, manner of articulation. Often thought of, thought, thought of, of mm -hmm. so thought of as the manner of articulation. Don't be afraid of sounding too high. Taiwan students are shu. They don't want to be, make too exaggerated movements with their voice. But you need to go pretty high there. Often thought of as the manner, manner, manner. It's pretty high in your range. 
often thought of as the manner of articulation. Good, now you have it. And link, manner of articulation. Do you have it? Rev, uh huh. Okay. We will use these, these tra traditional terms, but always remembering that speech, 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 speech sounds involve gestural movements. Gestural movements. Gestural movements. Mm -hmm. They're both important, so we stress both. Gestural movements. Not, not, remember, not is an honorary content word because it's so important. So, not is So, when you see something like this, you need to stress it and lengthen it. Speech sounds involve, involve gestural movements, not, stat uh, not static pos positions. Positions. Positions good. of the vocal organs. Very good. All right. So we're going to learn some new places and manners of articulation. <laughs> we could just summarize it that way. We're going to learn some new places and manners of articulation that we don't use in English. And that's about it. And the important thing to remember is when we produce speech sounds, although we often draw diagrams as though it were just sitting there in one position, actually it's a movement from A to B to C. Next. Consonants that occur in other languages are well worth studying. Not worth, worth. Worth. Right. Studying even by those concerned man mainly Good. Yeah. with the phonetic of English. Phonetics. Phonetics uh -huh. of English. Good. Many of the sounds that occur in other languages. In other languages. In other languages. Mm -hmm also occur in regional, 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 right. accented, or dis disordered, uh, disorder, disordered variety of English. Mm? Disordered what? Varieties. Varieties, and I, I tap that, varieties. Varieties. Mm -hmm. as, as we noted that at the beginning of uh, the previous chapter, the best way to study unfamiliar sounds unfamiliar unfamiliar mm -hmm. sounds is by observing them but ab, 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 mm -hmm. observing them in languages in which they are a regular easily 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 mm -hmm. observable part of the sound system of the sound system sounds Sound system. There you go. You did it. Everybody, sound system. Sound system. Varieties. Varieties. All right. And he's saying that actually you can find many unusual sounds in practically any language. This is kind of a theme with my British teacher. When we're talking about unusual sounds, we find that actually you can often find them in many languages, though they're not a regular part of the phonological system. Just like in English, we have which is used with horses. So that's an example of a sound that is used in a marginal way in the language, but we do have a click in English. And we also have in Chinese and in English. So when we are learning unusual sounds, it's good in order to understand them better to find a language where they are part of the phonology. So if we really want to understand clicks, we can't just look at English and its marginal use of with horses, but we should look at Bushman languages of South Africa, and then we can find out how clicks really work. So he's saying, although we'll find bits and pieces of these unusual sounds in English or any other language, we should go to the language where they are a normal part of the phonology to really understand them because there they're pronounced in a very natural way, they're very developed, people understand them better. And once we understand them in that exotic language, we can come back and understand them better, maybe in their marginal use, in a language like English or Mandarin. Did you follow that? Okay, good, so that's our introduction. Next reader. Articulatory targets. And once more. Articulatory targets. All right, that sounds sort of British, although my British teacher doesn't say it that way, it's articulatory. Everybody please remember it. I think I taught it first semester right at the beginning. But we need to practice it till it sticks and comes out naturally. Articulatory. Articulatory. 
Articulatory targets. Very good. Many of the possible places of articulation that are used in the languages of the world were, de world. World yep. were defined in Chapter 1, Figure 6.7.1, hmm. mm -hmm. which is similar to Figure 1.5. Shows 1.5 mm -hmm. shows three additional. Pause. Shows has got stress in its diangia, so we need to put a little pause there to keep up the right rhythm shows three additional places. Everyone try that. Shows three additional places. Right. If you say shows three additional places, it's going to slip by too fast. Our brain can't catch the important parts easily. Remember that this whole stress system in English, the intonational system in particular, is designed to help the listener grab onto the important parts. The structure is there because, for example, when you're putting up a brick wall, you have to use mortar. But the important part is the bricks, basically. So, we just need that for structure. But the important parts we need to slow down. Otherwise, the listener doesn't know what to grab, on, what to grab onto because we can't grab onto every word and it's not necessary. So when you slow down, especially, for example, for a monosyllabic word, that's a content word, put a little pause there. The listener will get it much more easily. Okay, shows. Shows three additional places that will be discussed below. Very good. The terms for all the places all. of open your mouth. All, all the yep. places of articulation. Of articulation. Of articulation. Once more. The terms for all the places of articulation mm -hmm. are not just names not, for not it's not nut. You didn't say nut, but it was getting close. Remember what I just said that not is very, very important. Slow down, stress it. Are not just names for particular locations on the roof of the mouth. Good. Um, names. Names. Not ni. We are tired. We are teased out each. Nay. Name. Underwear. 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 Names. Jong one. Underwear. Name. Now you're going down. Um, chila. Slow down. We have. Bia, 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 zai nian na. Okay? Nei yi. Just say underwear in Chinese. Don't even think about English. Just say underwear again. Go. Good. Say it like five more times. Nei yi. Nei yi. All right, five times with m at the end, but the m is very short. Nei yi. Nei yi. Remember, keep it in Chinese. But if you keep in Mandarin, it will be perfect English. That's the Maldun of this thing. So always think of underwear. It'll make you laugh. That'll make you happy, right? So, All right, let's try it with D at the end, named. So take it slowly. If you do it too fast, it'll come out named or named. So, named, named, try. Named. 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 Mm -hmm. Named. There you go. Mm. Each term specifies where the arrow starts. Where the, the arrow starts. Where the arrow starts. The articulator on the articulator. Lo the articulator mm -hmm. on the lower surface, sur surface, that surface. It's just like service, but it's voiceless. Ooh, service. Service. Surface. 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 Mm -hmm. That makes this. Mm -hmm. Stop it, steps. That mm -hmm. makes this particular gesture. Mm -hmm. gesture. Gesture. And where it ends. The part of the vocal tract that is the target of the gesture. Of the? Of the gesture. Gesture, right. Let's look at the figure they're talking about. 7.1. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense because we don't have the names attached to them. We're going to be learning them very soon. There's some we already know. Some of the places of articulation are the same, but we're going to use a new manner of articulation. And some are places of articulation that we have not used at all. Can you identify some that we have not used yet? The uvula. We haven't had uvulars except in the tutorials. We did actually do a little with uvulars. Ah, ah, 
Ka. Okay, I, it's easy to make a ejective because Georgian has an ejective, um, a uvular ejective. Ka, ka. The word for water is Kali. Kali. So for me, it's easy to go to an ejective because that's what I practice. But a, ha, and ga. That's those are uvular. What's another place we haven't used? Pharyngeal, look at number 10, that's pharyngeal. And number 11 is a really unusual one. I'm gonna have trouble with those because I haven't learned languages that use those sounds. Number 11 is epiglottal, all right. Now those are kind of unusual, quite unusual. Um, we'll find them in languages like Arabic, some languages of the Caucasus, but not Georgian. Um, so some will be new places of articulation, some will be familiar places of articulation with new manners of articulation. Okay, let's go. A large number of non-English sounds are to be found in other languages. Many of them involve using gestures in which the target or the place of articulation is different from any found in English. Good, watch your the, the, not the, the. Mm -hmm. For other, it is- Can for, you link? For others, mm -hmm. it is the type of gesture, what is traditionally called the manner of articulation that is different. Mm -hmm. Everyone, gesture. Gestures. No S. Gesture. <laughs> gesture. And remember, if you're saying gesture, push your jaw up so you can put it back up to eh. Gesture. Gesture. That's good. Sounds good. Don't say gesture. Gesture. We will illustrate the different targets by considering how each place of articulation is used in English and in other languages for making stops, nasals, and fricatives. Okay, that was a beautiful listing. Your intonation was perfect on that. So stops, nasals, and fricatives. That's how we do lists. Go ahead. The numbers in the following paragraphs refer to the numbered arrows in figures 7.1. All right, that's more eastern coast or east coast. I say paragraphs, not paragraphs. Everyone, paragraphs. paragraphs. And I also say arrows. I don't say arrows. I say arrows. Yes. That's why Mary, Mary, and Mary are all the same for me. So Aries. Oh, sorry, arrows. And then next, <clears throat> we're going to start out with our first gesture, which we already have in English, but we're going to do something different with it. One, the bilabial gesture. The bilabial gesture is common in English. All right, are we going to stress gesture? We don't need bilabial to because we've said gesture. it twice. The bilabial gesture is common in English. In English. In English, mm -hmm. which has bilabial stops and nasals. Bilabial stops, stops and nasals. <laughs> Try to do a little analysis of what's new and what's old. Okay, because when you see something that's new, then you stress it. If we just talked about it once or twice, take the stress off. So you have to do a scan before you're going to read to determine which one you're going to stress and which one not. Which has bilabial stops and nasals. Mm -hmm. P, B, M. Right. But bilabial fricatives in English are simply elephones of the, labi of the lab labial dental so sound. Labial dental sounds, f, v. Mm -hmm. In some languages, for example, eve, 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 eve. eve of West. Okay, it sounds like eve, but look at my mouth. This is going to get, it's going to be a sample now of what we're going to talk about right away. It's eve, eve, it's not v. They do have the v sound, and they also have a bilabial, a voice bilabial fricative, eve. So like when you're cold, you might make this sound. Eve. Uh -huh. Eve of West Africa. Bil bilabial fricatives contrast with labial dental. Contrast. Contrast with labial dental fricatives. With labial dental fricatives. With labial dental fricatives. Yeah, yeah. You're an excellent reader, but I think you have to work more on information, new and old information. And what are we contrasting? We're contrasting what kind of fricatives. Fricatives is repeated so we don't stress that. So are simply allophones of the, uh, sorry, that's the preceding line. Simply allophones of the labiodental sounds v in some languages, for example, area of West Africa, by labial fricatives. Fricatives bun tai ching because we didn't mention it before. But we're going to repeat it so we also don't want to make it too strong. 
So bilabial fricatives contrast with labiodental fricatives. Can you just try that part, bilabial? Bilabial fricatives. Mm? Bilabial. <laughs> bilabial fricatives. Fricatives 还是要有点重 because it's we have mentioned it, but it's important here too. Bilabial fricatives contrast with labial dental fricatives. Okay, good enough. The symbols for the voiceless and voiced bila <coughs> bilabial fricatives are <laughs> right. All right. So the first one, these are both Greek letters. So it's a circle with a vertical line through it, and the second one is a beta. That's the voiced one. Go on. Uh, these sounds are these, so these sounds. These sounds are pronounced by bringing the two lips nearly together. Okay, you're putting a little too much emphasis on too many words. Listen. These sounds are pronounced by bringing the two lips. There's a tonic nearly together. These sounds. It's not these sounds are pronounced by bringing the two because we keep getting the signal that we're done, and then more comes, and you're getting excited, and we're running out of excitement energy. We can only use so much excitement energy. It has to be saved for the really important things. If we use it up right away as we go along, it's like having dessert for every course. We can't have dessert for every course. Mmm, sounds delicious. No, we can't have dessert for every course of a meal. But we keep using it up. That means we don't have any way to surprise people when it really is needed. So、um, don't go down. That's the key.、Um, these sounds are pronounced by bringing the two lips. That's why we have the continuation rise. That puts off our excitement. 就延后把我们的那个兴奋的地方延后一下，所以哎，等一下会有，会有，你等一下会有。So <clears throat> these sounds are pronounced by bringing the two lips, lips continuation rise nearly together. That's a bigger tonic, so that there is only a slit between them. There's our excitement. That's the big tonic of the sentence. Go. These sounds are pronounced by bringing the two lips. Bringing. Bringing、mm -hmm. the two lips nearly together. Nearly, don't go nearly. It's nearly. Nearly together. There we go. So that there is only. Slip up, slow down. So, so that, that there is only. So that there is only a slit between them. Fair between them. Between them. Yeah. Right. In every, the name of the language itself. Okay, you got you went too much too 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 far down on language. So the name of the language, language. Hmm hmm. I think that's a tone you can practice. The language itself. In every, the name of in the. In every. In every. Right. The name of the language itself is. Eve. Is Eve. Eve. I forget which tone it is. Yeah. Eve. Mhm.、Mm、Where is the word for two? Where is the word for? Where is the word for two? Right. Is Eve. Right. Eve. Eve. Or Eve, whichever it is. Yeah. Mhm.、Mm、Try to pronounce these.、Mm? You went、uh, down again. Try to pronounce.、Mm? Listen. Pronounce. Try. Listen. Try to pronounce. Try to pronounce these contrasting words yourself. Everyone, listen, and try to analyze each intonation that I use here. Try to pronounce little tonic. These contrasting words, bigger con、uh, tonic, and the biggest one is on yourself. Yourself. Try to pronounce these contrasting words yourself. Okay. Try to pronounce. Try to pronounce these contrasting words yourself. That's good. Ewe also contrast voiceless by labial. Voiceless. Voiceless by labial. By labial. Don't go down. You're you're going down to your low range, and it sounds like you're finished. So, voiceless by labial and. Voiceless by labial and labial dental fricatives. Good. Yeah. The contrast involving all these sounds. Are shown in Table Seven Point One. All right, and if this is open and ready, maybe we can hear the samples. Eve, 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 eve. All right, and this is with the labiodental. Eve. Okay, that's with the v sound. Eve, eve, eve. Eve, eve, eve. It's a little hard to hear, 
But that is the labial dental fricative. No, so it's the bilabial, sorry. Bilabial fricative, voiced bilabial fricative. And we have a couple other words. I'll look at table 7.1. We'll just go through those. Some of them are voiceless. Okay, everybody, upper left hand corner. This one means he polished. <laughs> It's not really tight. It's not ifa. It's ifa, ifa. I'm on song the answer. And then this one has an F, labial dental. Ifa, ifa, ifa. Okay. And then we just listen to the other two. Let's listen to the right hand column. All right, so now we know the tone marks. If it ends high, then it's a high tone, and if it ends low, it's a low tone. Now with the labial dental. Two high tones. And then here's the voiced. And then labial dental. It's not strongly voiced. It's not that strongly voiced. All right, that's a good place to stop because we've got a new topic after Jerome is Annie, right? Okay, so we'll do that second hour after the test. We now have all the tests, right? We're going to continue. I just noticed something in, in the notes of one of you, and that is a pronunciation of figure. It is not figure. It's not you. It's, an, it's a schwa. Everyone, figure. 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 We have this slang expression, go figure. Go figure, that means... 讲一大堆好像很不合理的一件事情，讲完了，他奇怪还是那样做。Go figure, 你自己去想，怎么会这个样子？Go figure, go figure. That's a phrase you can practice it in. All right, we got through bilabial fricatives, and our main uh, language where we get examples from was what? Eve, yeah. Good. We're going to continue now with lingual labials. These are very rare, and they were actually only recently recorded, and they only recently invented a symbol for the IPA. It's in the past 10 years. Peter Latifoged was involved in that. It's something new. It doesn't often happen that we get a new symbol in the IPA. So at the time, it was all over the media, at least the media that I watch. <laughs> they made a big deal of it, a new symbol in the IPA. Okay, next reader, please. We should also note here some other labial, labial, mm. labial sounds not shown in figure 7.1. A few Austronesian, langu Austronesian. Nisian, Austronesian languages, languages. languages mm -hmm. spoken in Vanuatu. Vanuatu. That's how I say it anyway. Have lingual labials. All right, before you go on, lingual. Labials, what are those going to be? Lingo is tongue. Lingo is tongue. Because lengua in Spanish goes back to Latin, means both tongue and language. And in Georgian, it's ena. Ena is the word both for tongue and language. And a friend of mine posted on my Facebook, it was, okay, ena is tongue and language, right? The genitive is is, enis, enis. That's the genitive in Georgian. So they had a sign that said enis salata, enis salata. Salata, you can tell it's a walayu. It's, it's a salad, that's right. So enis salata, how do you think they translated it into English? Go ahead. Tongue salad, tongue is tagas and yosho. But they didn't translate it into tongue salad. They made a mistake and wrote language salad. <laughs> it's on my Facebook if you want to see it. Language salad in Georgian, yeah. So they, they have very, very funny English in Georgia like anywhere else when uh, 
people translate menus without asking a native speaker. It happens all over in Taiwan. There's some really crazy translations. <laughs> uh, but not just Taiwan. It's a worldwide phenomenon. If you want to read a whole bunch of funny examples I posted before, go to English.com. English.com, you'll see a lot of very funny signs in English. I think it started out in Japan. That's where they got the name. <clears throat> but it's everywhere. Right? So linguo means tongue, and labial means? So very good. Now, how are you going to produce a lingual labial without reading on? Right. Is it probably going to be the upper or lower lip? Just because it's convenient and natural. Very good. It's kind of weird. I suppose it's possible, but it's just like a lot of sounds that we don't produce. Like what? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. We don't have any language that does it, even though we can do it. It's pretty awkward. And we also don't have ingressive clicks. I'm sorry, we don't have egressive clicks. They're all ingressive, my fault. Right, that's just the way it is. So lingual labials, go ahead. In which the town touches. In which, not which, in which. In which the which, town. Which, which, which. Uh -huh. Which the town touches the, the upper lip. All right, before we go on, <laughs> Austronesian in Chinese is called? Nan Dao Yu Xi. Nan Dao Yu Xi, Austronesian. You need to know that because you're Taiwanese. <coughs> and all of the native languages of Taiwan, all of the aboriginal languages of Taiwan are Austronesian. All of them are Austronesian. They go back thousands of years, a long time. Um, as for the early history, there's still some zheng yi. Not everybody agrees, uh, so I won't go into that. Um, and also, Taiwan is known as the homeland of Austronesian. And we've mentioned that in class before. So languages spread out from Taiwan to the rest of the world, and they spread out really broadly. Austronesian, before colonization, not counting colonization, is probably the most widely distributed language family of the world. So from Taiwan to Hawaii, and with stops in New Zealand and Africa. In which country? Madagascar. Madagascar. And I've just talked about this recently to my African friend, because we were talking about a special kind of music, a kind of um, zither that they have in Madagascar. So Malagasy is the name of the language, and it is an Austronesian language. Of course, it's been influ influenced by African. That's to be expected. But in any case, we're now talking about Austronesian languages in Vanuatu. It's an island. And the tongue touches the upper lip. And I don't know the proper pronunciation, so we'll just say venentaut. Go ahead. Venentaut has nasals, stops, and fricatives made in this way. Made in this way. Made in this way. Made in this way. Everyone? Made in this way. All right, so nasals, let's try a lingual labial nasal with a. Ah. Ma, ma, ma. Let's try a stop. First, a voiceless stop. Ba, ba. And then voice? Ba, ba. And a fricative? Ba, ba. Right? Go ahead. The diacritic for indicating a lingual labial articula articulation is? Just jump over those. When you see a symbol, they describe it right after usually, so just jump over it. Is a shape like a seagull. All right, hai o, hai o fu hao. That's kind of fun. Placed under the, the coronal symbol. So that means that we'll write it with something like T or N, but we're going to put this symbol under it, or it could be a D if it were voiced. But we're going to put this little seagull under it to show that it's lingual labial. Go ahead. The venom tout for breadfruit is tatpate. Tate. 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 Mm-hmm. And first. Go ahead. Bate. 
Tate. Tate. Uh -huh. Tate. And for stone is nada. This, nada. Uh -huh. nada. This and other venom taut sounds are on the CD. Let's go listen to them. They don't give you a table, so I'll just play them. This is a plain bilabial, excuse me, bilabial. Butuk. Butuk. Plain bilabial and a plain, uh, and a plain, and a plain alveolar here. Butuk. Butuk. And then here we're going to have a plain nasal. Namuk. Namuk. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like the transcription to me, but that's what we've got. And then here is a voiced bilabial. So get ready for this. This is a beta. Now, if you hadn't learned voiced bilabials and even having learned them, it sounds like a V, doesn't it? But it's a V. Naval. 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 And we've got at the end. Naval. Naval. Right here. Naval. 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 They didn't mark that final. All right, now here are the lingual labials. This is the one in the book. Date. 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 Now, it sounds like date to me. It sounds like date, but it's date. 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 I can't tell from the recording. The second one has a lingual labial nasal in the middle. It's in the middle of the word. Look. Nimmuk, 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 nimmuk. The first one's a regular alveolar nasal. Nimmuk, 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 nimmuk. I think it sounds like an M in the recording. Nimmuk, but it's nimmuk, nimmuk. All right, and here's the next one, the fricative. Navet, navet. And that just sounds like a V to me. Navet, but it's navet. Nava, listen. Nava, nava, nava. Okay. And then we have. Um, it gives alveolar, but this is it has a. It's marked as a lingual labial. So let's listen and see what it is. Thalu, thalu. That sounded like something in. It sounded like Cindy. It sounded like Cindy. I don't know about that one, I, but it says it says Vanu, according to what they wrote here. I'm not so sure about it. It says alveolar, but it looks like it's they marked it with a lingual labial. So I'm not so sure about that date. I think there's a mistake there. But anyway, that's lingual labial. Something new in the IPA. Let's go on. <clears throat> Two many languages, many languages are like English and having the labial dental fricatives. 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 Yeah, you go a little fast and it sounds a little too voiced or something. Fricatives. Fricatives. That's good. Mm. But probably no language has labial dental stops or nasals, except as allophones of the corresponding bilabial sounds. Okay, you read beautifully, but it's really fast. Just slow down. Um, labial dental stops or nasals. Labial dental, we have fricatives, right? F -v. But probably no language has labial dental stops or nasals. First let's talk about stops. Why would no language have labiodental stops? Labiodental now, not lingual labial. Labiodental. Labiodental. Because the teeth the teeth cannot fully be, uh, cannot be fully sealed with, with the lip. That's right. And a, a lot of people don't have teeth. A lot of people don't have teeth. Or a lot of people have very bad teeth or missing teeth. <laughs> so, v, v, but, v, v, it's real, we can't, just like Jerome said, we can't make a really complete seal. We can't do it. So, apparently, no language tries. They just give up. Very often, I thought of that because very often his informants were older people. A lot of the languages that Peter Latifoged surveyed were endangered. And when a language is endangered, who still speaks it usually? Very old people. And what happens with old people in a developing country? Yeah, not, yeah, either they have no teeth or they have many health problems. 
and the, the tooth problem really influences your uh, data collection. So for some of his data, he had to mention, this person doesn't have teeth, so. Teeth are going to All right, so that stops because it's going to leak. We're not, we can't produce a complete seal. How about for nasals? Why do we not usually have nasals as a phoneme, labiodental nasals as a phoneme? Let's try to make them. Mm, mm. Now, don't look at me. Mm. Can you tell that it's labiodental? <laughs> what does it sound like? It sounds like M. It sounds like a bilabial. Because it is not perceptually salient enough. Salient is tuchu. It's not distinctive enough. It's, it's, it's not distinctive enough. Let's do it again. It's not distinctive enough from other sounds, in this case, the bilabial. Distinctive. Perceptually salient. Perceptually salient. To sally means to chong chu lai, and salient means to stick out. So, that sounds like a possible test question. Watch out for that one. Um, let's go on. In English, a Can labial. Uh, in English, mm -hmm. a labial dental <coughs> nasal. Mm, mm, mm. May occur when mm occurs before f, as an emphasis or symphony. All right, everybody, try that emphasis. Watch me when I'm doing it, and then you try it. Emphasis. In in because of anticipatory assimilation or co-articulation, emphasis, it will usually, probably usually be a labiodental nasal. Emphasis, how about jiao xiang yue? Symphony, watch. Symphony, sim, sim, symphony. Okay, try those two. I don't say emphasis, emphasis. Sis. Mm -hmm. Say these words in a normal conversational style, and see in a, normal, in a normal conversational style. In a normal conversational style, and see if your lower lip ever contacts with, contacts your upper lip during the nasal. All right, contacts doesn't always take with. To contact with somebody, we don't usually say that. To contact somebody, and note that the stress stays on the first syllable. Contact to contact somebody, even though it's a verb. So um, you just tried that. Did you find you were making? Uh, Labiodental nasal, yeah? Symphony emphasis. Do you want to take the next paragraph? That was kind of short, Amy. Some languages have affricates in which the bilabial stop is released into a labial dental fricative. Practice these sounds by learning, the, learning to say the German words. Who uh, said German? Go ahead. Pane, pane. Kind of explodes. Pan. And it means pan. I don't know why they say bowl. Ping di guo. Pan. And? Fluke. Fluke. And then the, the final they, uh, stops there written as final voiceless stops are actually, I'm sorry, final voice stops in German are actually voiceless. They'll write BDG, but actually they pronounce PDK. Yeah, so the final. Stops that are written as final voice stops are actually voiceless, and fluke is a plow li, li tian da nega li. Everybody, fluke, fluke. And the word fluke is a flight. Hong Kong banji is fluke, like English flight, they're related. And this one is fluke. So fluke and fluke. Fluke, F, and then PF. So fluke and fluke. Mm -hmm. So that's also one for the test, so please remember that. It's a bilabial stop released into a labiodental fricative. For affricates, the two sounds, the stop and the fricative, should be at the same place of articulation or do they have to be exactly the same place of articulation? No, they have to be close. They can be either the same place of articulation or very close. And in this case, P is bilabial, and F is labiodental, but they're very close, so fluke. The first sound is 
bilabial， 并不是两个被 assimilate 成 labial dental， so fluke， bilabial plus labial dental 还是算 Africa， 那个发音的位置很接近。So we're clear on that. Okay, so we have、um, a labial dental fricative coming out. Labial dental, yeah, after a bilabial stop in German and in Africa. Let's go on. Um, I'm Bella. Most speakers of both British and American English have dental fricative, but no dental stops, but nasals, no but no dental stops,、mm -hmm. nasals, or lateral, or laterals, or laterals, or laterals,、mm -hmm. except allophonically before th, th, as in eth, eighth, eighth, eighth. I don't say it that way, but I'm doing it for the sake of the book. Eighth. I just say eighth, but he's. Assuming we say eighth, eighth, and tenth, wealth. All right, let's practice these again. We've had them many times before, but let's go over them again. So,、um, it says that we have dental. What stops nasals and laterals? Eighth. The T is going to be dental because it's influenced by the th. Everybody, eighth. 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 Th. First th, then th. I don't say it that way, but I am now. Eighth. 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 My normal way, eighth. eighth.、Mm -hmm. That doesn't work here. It doesn't make a good example. Tenth, tenth, tenth. tenth. and wealth. wealth. So the L also becomes interdental. And remember, we're using interdental because we need dental for other things. Go ahead. Many speakers of French, Italian, and other languages, and other languages, and other languages, and other and, and other and other languages,、mm -hmm. typically have dental stops. Nasals and laterals. That's something to remember. In the Romance languages, what we say, what we call alveolar sounds, are typically dental, just like Mandarin. We may call them alveolar as well for Mandarin, but mostly they're dental. The tonolo in Mandarin are generally dental, and that's true of the Romance languages in general: French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, etc. Those are dental. Go ahead. In these languages. The 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 are not just coroticulated elephants that occur only、uh, only before th, th, as in English as in English as in English. Can you link? As in English. As in English. As in English. There we go. That sounded really natural. That's good. So if we just have the word D E in French, it's the the. It's rounded first of all. And second, okay, so d, d, and your tongue is going to touch your teeth. So, and n, n, and l, they are all dental in French. Okay.、Mm -hmm. However, there is a great deal of individual variation in the pronunciation of these consonants in all these languages. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is the theory: they're dental, but there will be different degrees of dentalness. According according to a careful paleographic study,、mm -hmm. around one third of California English speakers Californian English Californian English speakers English. Californian English yep Californian English、mm -hmm. English speakers、mm -hmm. have dental stops, and many French speakers have alveolar rather than dental consonants. Okay, so that's just the opposite of what we'd expect in California. Do we normally have dental stops in English? Do we have dental stops in English? We have dental fricatives, interdental fricatives. But do we normally have dental stops in English? No. But according to their data, and he said it was a careful、uh, palatographic. That means that、oh, we'll learn about it later in the chapter. They put charcoal in your mouth, either on your tongue or on your palate, and then you make the sound, and then they take a photograph of it. They stick a camera in your mouth, and they they use a mirror, and then they take a photograph of which parts have been removed through contact. Because 只要是有接触到那个口水，会让那个碳粉有一片不见了 That tells us where you have touched. So they did very careful studies, and he writes that because a lot of people say, "Nah, I don't believe that." That's why he said, 非常的仔细，很用心 It shows that. About a third of Californian English speakers, and that's where Professor Latifoged used to teach, have dental stops. So they don't actually have alveolar stops; they actually touch the teeth in English. 
That's something we don't really expect. And something else we don't expect is French speakers have alveolar rather than dental because all the books tell us they have dental stops. But in fact, a lot of French people make alveolar stops. So there is a lot of variation. Go ahead. Will over, uh, will over half of them in the case of the lateral? Ooh, okay, so good. Well over half of them. That half should be really high and emphasized. 超过一半,那就数目相当多哦. Well over half of them in the case of the lateral. Le, so I just said they probably say le, dental, but often people, more than half, will say le, le, an as an alveolar, okay? Say words such as tip, tip, nip, lip, and try to feel where your tongue touches the roof of your mouth. Of your of your mouth. Very good, I'm being picky. Um, all right, say those slowly, one at a time. Don't try to do them all at once in English. And see if you are using dental stops and nasals in English, which is very likely since you might be influenced by Mandarin, or if they are alveolar in your English. Try them. Tip, dip, nip, lip. Are they alveolar or dental for you? Alveolar? You're not touching your teeth? You are. Okay, everybody just tell me if your stops and nasal and, and lateral are alveolar or dental. Dental? I think it's dental. Dental. Okay. For T and I use alveolar, but for T and L I use dental. Okay, good. You mean? T and T is more like dental and L is like alveolar. More alveolar, alveolar, okay? My T and L is alveolar and Okay. Dental. Dental. All of them dental. L and N are alve alveolar. Okay. So that's to be expected, and it's no problem because we don't really mind at all in English. One third of Californians apparently use dental articulations. It does not bother us at all. So either one is fine. Let's go on. Some languages, such as Malayalam, Very good. a Dravidian language, language spoken in southern India, contrasts language, pause. Mm, language spoken in southern India. What are we omitting here? Which is, which is yeah. contrast, dent contrast. contrast dental and alveolar consonants. Examples of contrasting mm? uh, Examples of contrasting Malayalam uh, nasals are shown in Table 7.2. The table also includes other consonantal gestures that are used in Malayalam, but not in most forms of English. We will discuss these in subsequent paragraphs. Okay. And let's listen to Malayalam. And in other years, students told me some of them they can't distinguish them at all, but honestly, a lot of nasals are very difficult to hear clearly and correctly with audio recordings. In person, if you're looking at them, it might be easier, but they're pretty hard to hear, except for like bilabials are pretty clear. The more familiar ones are clear. So this is, they again don't have the table in the book. Oh, they do, they do, sorry. Page 166, so I'll just play the sounds, uh, the items in this table. Come me. Come me. Try it. Come me. Come me. I don't hear much aspiration. Come me. Come me. Come me. Come me. That sounds like a pretty clear zero onset, zero VOT. Let's go to dental. Pan me. Pan me. But make it really dental. Put your tongue against the back of your upper row of teeth. Pan me. Pan me. Pan me. Here's alveolar. That should sound really ordinary to us. Kanmi. Kanmi. Compare that to the dental. Can you hear a clear difference? Panmi. If you listen carefully, maybe you can, but these are distinctive. These are different phonemes in Malayalam. 
So their ears must be sharply attuned to dental versus alveolar. I don't think that's that common in languages that they contrast them as different phonemes. But we have it in Malayalam. Let's just finish the table here. This is retroflex now. Curl up your tongue. Kanni. 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 All right. And then we've got palatal, which is pretty easy. This is a ny sound. That should be pretty clear. Kanni. 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 It's not that obvious. And then velar should be easy. Kungi. Kungi. These are all distinctive, different phonemes. That's kind of amazing. Um, did we finish that paragraph? Not quite, right? Finish? Yes. We will discuss. That's right. So that's where we stop. And then next reader will be Vivian, right? So start with alveolar stops on page 165. And remember vowels and consonants. And have your questions ready right at the beginning of class. And we'll try to get through that quickly. We will, I also plan to give you a dictation again on Wednesday. And we may, we may already have bilabials. I haven't written it yet, so I'm not sure. Um, what else do we need to know? We're going to mainly concentrate on getting through Chapter 7 quickly. It's not that difficult. There'll be some new sounds, but I don't think you'll have much trouble with them. So we will see you on Wednesday.